Welcome to our question and answer. I am excited about these questions this week. Thank you guys for asking bigger questions. The first question is, okay, you have opened a can of worms for me, Jess, because I have so many questions. Something I have been pondering is about evolution. Um, what has been the point of evolution? Where were the dinosaurs? Why were there dinosaurs? Did the Big Bang actually happen? And is it created consciousness? Where did consciousness come from? And why are humans so lucky to have it the way that we do? Um, were there higher beings like ETs in the beginning? All of the ones who helped create the pyramids? Is it along the lines of what you were thinking? You don't have to answer everything, even though I know you could given enough time. Okay, so obviously this is a question that if you have been in my Tika archives at all over the last five years, I have gone into a lot of the evolution stories. Now, remind, remind you guys, anytime you're listening to any perspective, mine, another teacher's, another guru, another psychic, it is one perspective. This by no means this um, answer I'm gonna give you is the absolute truth because there's no way to understand the absolute truth as every person who participated in the beginning of creation and all the stories of creation had a unique perspective, which means that every single person that talks about the stories of evolution, the stories of ascension, the stories of the beginning, the stories of consciousness creating itself are, are all gonna have a different viewpoint okay because we're all looking at it from a different perspective so when i answer bigger questions like this keep in mind that i am channeling the collective of higher self that is who i channel when i'm working with you guys i channel the collective of your higher expression so that's kind of a drop down of dimensional um understanding as, as higher consciousness drops down into a space where then the higher version of you that remains outside of the veil holding your dominant frequency of your true soul's essence remains pure positive energy. That is what I channel. So that's the way that I'm gonna answer it from a broad perspective. So obviously what's the point of evolution? It's a game. And why would we be playing this game? Because it's fun. And why is it fun? Well, because anytime you get to experience yourself, you identify and learn an, an aspect of yourself. So imagine that if we went all the way back to the be very beginning and there was light and that light was information and it was a single consciousness, okay? And this single consciousness was having this experience. Yet it's very difficult to have a one singular experience and be satisfied. So what that consciousness decided to do was experience itself through different aspects of itself by basically breaking apart. So if you imagine a big disco ball, right? What does it look like? It's a ball, it's, it's a round sphere, it's, it's all reflective. And imagine that it, although unique pieces of the whole, broke into gazillion pieces, more, you know, Google amounts. And each one of these tiny specks of reflected light, glass, right? Consciousness was then able to have its own unique experience while still being a piece of the whole. And as this began to unfold, each aspect of the one began to have multiple experiences and have experiences with each other through different focal points, all, all by which each focused expression in ultimately was seen by the one, which means the one, the, the unified spectrum of consciousness is looking through your eyes at your reality as you. Even though you have a unique experience, you are having the experience of one tiny drop of the ocean. Although when you return to the ocean, you are the ocean in one drop. Okay, that's very, it's very hard for the logical, an egoic mind to fathom the vastness of consciousness and the way that it can be one thing, all things, and no things simultaneously. Now, as everything kind of fractaled and became 
unique, although connected and remaining a piece of the whole, had its own experience. It traveled all throughout the different universes, multiverses, and had different experiences by looking through different aspects of itself. So if I turn to this side of the room, I'm going to see one perspective of reality. Now, if this was all I could ever see, then I would believe that this was my life, no matter what was behind me. Now, if I turn to the other side, now I have a different perspective of reality. So each aspect of that broken piece, I won't say broken, but shattered or fractal piece of consciousness ultimately has two sides. And on one side is reflected light and one side is an opaque mass or a heads and a tails quality. So within you, you have this reflective light based idea of yourself. And on the back side of your shadow aspect is an opaque lack of understanding because you can't see back there, right? So what we do is we flip and flop throughout the universe reflecting different aspects of ourselves, learning how to become more aware of itself by having all these different experiences, yet bringing all of that data and that conscious awareness and experience of each unique perspective of reality back to the one. And it is literally like a living, breathing, um, I, I won't call it a computer, but it's, it's like when I look at what the idea of source energy is, is it is it's constantly learning about itself through each unique perspective, thinking it's unique and different, although it's still the one. OK, so that's like one tiny, 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 tiny part of one of your questions. So I kind of want to touch on a little bit of all of it. So now fast forward. Right. Um, and when we're looking at time and space, it's a linear construct, so it doesn't actually exist. So past, present, future, parallel realities, possible potential realities all exist and vibrate in the now moment, which means that none of your past lives actually happen in the past. They are all happening simultaneously in the now moment, living and vibrating within you, which is why sometimes if there's unresolved karmic energy attached to one of your incarnations, experiences, projections, realities, it that will be kind of a magnifying or a magnetic pull for you to work through in this particular incarnation. So what was the point of dinosaurs? What's the Big Bang? Well, when we look at the Big Bang idea, we think about, okay, we think about an orgasm, right? So in order for this, this um, consciousness to split apart and have all of these different aspects of itself, it needed to first split in two. So if you watch the idea of how a baby is born and how a baby is created, it first splits into two, right? And then it splits into four and then it splits and splits and splits. And all of a sudden now it's forming organisms and it's forming molecules and chemicals and bones and all these things. And that's basically how it all works. And it feeds back into one central nervous system or one central consciousness or one central rooting system. And Earth being part of that idea is Earth is a really unique um, holographic space because although a projection of the one itself, it is unique as it is contained and, and known throughout the whole entire universe as the living library. Now the living library houses all data, information, stories, Akashic information, all things from the universe's shenanigans and recordings, bits and pieces are contained in data, like tiny, tiny fractals of cellular memory and consciousness on Earth. So Earth is actually very, 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 very important, okay? Because this particular, this particular um, holographic space is the database for the rest of the universe. And notice how many different species we have here on this planet, how many different plants, how much different types of water we have, how much, how many different types of, um, you know, crystals and rocks and sediments and we have so much contrast on this planet we have different types of um, atmospheres in different parts of the planets we've got 
We've got gas, we've got steam, we've got ice, we've got everything. We've got water, we've got everything on this planet. So this planet is known throughout the universal construct as the living library. Therefore, it's very important. It is also a planet that naturally goes through a ascension and reascension um, process on her own. So she is a living, breathing organism that we are literally sharing space with her here. And she is going through her deascension, reascension process every, I don't know how many, um, how many millennial, but it's, again, it's no time and space. So she just goes through her process, let's call it. And the reason why she does that is she can move all the way into contraction and density and she can formulate data and contract it. So it's almost like if you were going to take a big picture file, right? And you wanted to send it to someone. And you were like, how can I send this to someone? The file's too big. It's going to take too long. Well, because Earth is a living library, every, you know, life our ascension cycle, what she does is she decompresses and she compresses data. And she basically moves everything back into density and makes everything tiny. Now, what this also does is it produces a lot of very important, um, you know, expensive uh, metals and diamonds because of the contraction process. So we've got lots of silver, we've got lots of gold, we've got lots of diamonds. And basically what it does is that's based in contraction and, re and expansion. And because of that, this planet is also um, perfect for mining. Now gold, silver, diamonds, things like that are utilized in different universal um, planes to create anything from you know medicines to weapons throughout the universe. We're talking Star Wars here. So again, not only is Earth a living library, it's a, been a genetic research base. It has been um, a place for every, e every byproduct of the micro of all existence has existed at one point on Earth. And it also creates very precious metals through its contraction and expansion. So what happens is it, contra it, it decompresses and compresses all the data and makes everything very, 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 very tiny. And so then it grounds it and puts it into the filing system of Mother Earth herself, and then she begins her expansion process. And through her expansion process, this is where the, the, the species and the consciousness and the information on the planet can go through its rebirth experience and move out of density, which is contraction, and move into expansion and have an experience of being unaware into an awareness process. So a lot of higher level consciousness beings have used earth for all different purposes throughout the beginning. Another really valuable um, thing about our particular planet, although considered by the ghetto by many, is because we have you know so much extreme here we have the ability to have so much light and also house so much contrast here is that the way that the earth is positioned in the universe is there is many 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 travel highways which means lots of black holes lots of wormholes that surround earth which means earth is really easy to get to from everywhere from everywhere throughout all of the universe so again if i was going to have a library Right. I was going to store some important data about my planet or my people or my species. And I wanted to archive it in a deascension, reascension space. I would have it on Earth and it would be easy for me to get to. So, of course, when we're thinking about, you know, the Big Bang and then the dinosaurs were here and then the dinosaurs disappeared and then we've got pyramids and we've got giants walking around and we've got dragon bones and we've got, you know, fairies and we've got E.T. sightings throughout the beginning of time. I hope that that little understanding that I just gave you gave you a more of understanding that everything that's ever existed has been able to be here and have some sort of physical experience. Now, again, if we're gonna go back to kind of the uh, Atlantis prophecies and look at kind of Atlantis and Lemuria as far as like their connection with Earth was they were, um, you know, used as 
their, their DNA was turned way down when they were inhabiting Earth as peaceful beings of light that were actually helping with the reascension and deascension process because Atlantean bodies can go through the same experience that Mother Earth could, just like us that are here on the planet now. Our bodies are actually built to go through this reascension and deascension process with her. And a lot of times throughout history on this planet, there has been, you know, a demand um, and other parts of the universe for gold, silver, and diamonds, and other precious metals like our crystals and quartz and all kinds of things that are needed elsewhere. And there has been many, many, many stories of enslaved um, humans, enslaved beings, and ultimately the, the story that higher self projects, again, story, is that um, the Atlanteans were uh, taken as slaves their DNA was turned down from 12 stacks of light into two. And basically all they were able to do at that point was harvest gold and um, basically, you know, do as they were told. It was kind of like the, I am here, I am here, I am here. And what happened was the, the group of um, people who enslaved that particular species known as the Anunnaki, and again, this is a story. This is one perspective. The Anunnaki said, you know, these slaves that we've turned their DNA down so that they do not remember that they are pure positive source energy. All they're doing is dying on us. So we need them to live. Well, and so what they did is they asked another species in the universe to help add some genetic qualities to the human body so it would be uh, more malleable. It would uh, be able to procreate. So they called on the Syrians. The Syrians are master connection builders. They are geneticists. They are tech. They are our tech support of the universe and said, no problem. We can add a little, um, we can add a chakra system to the human body to procreate. Therefore, that is where the sacral chakra comes from, donated by the Syrian race. Um, and then these human bodies were able to procreate. Now, it wasn't really working out to have, see the original guardians of the planet that held the information of the living library were our mega beasts, okay? Our dinosaurs, our whales, our large beasts. They, they're considered oversouls and they have m multiples of souls in one giant body. And what their purpose was, was to hold space and light on the planet and govern and basically protect the living library. Well, when they came to mine gold, they realized that humans, flesh and blood, could not survive with dinosaurs. So they began to kill off the mega beasts or remove them from the agriculture of Earth so that humans could live and do their job as harvesters, farmers. And that is one perspective. You guys, if you've heard this a different way, awesome. You know, I've heard it four or five different ways, but when I'm telling a story, I'm basically collecting it from lots of different star systems, a uh, higher self perspective, and I'm giving you kind of a metaphor, baseline kindergarten understanding of this. So why do we ascend? Why do we deascend? Well, if we're going to go through a process on earth, right? And this process of earth was so symbolic because if you understand that every life cycle of earth moving from all the way into the first dimension and she moves all the way into the 12th dimension in her plane, that's how she can hold all the information without any destruction because everything just compresses and expands. So we lose no data, but because the way that humans have evolved over time and remained in such dark slavery based matrix kind of mindsets, Every time we ha got a little bit of intelligence, we try to blow up our own planet, okay? I mean, that's basically what we've done. Every time we've got a little bit of intelligence or power in our hands, we literally have had access to blow up this planet. So there's had to be many, 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 many interventions to come and either teach humans that they are source energy and bring them into the light to show them how they can work together, to show them what peace is. And so if you look back in history, you can read that, oh, the Buddha was here and Jesus was here and you know, Kuan Yin was here and all these ascended teachers were here and they were implanted in specific times 
right before great destruction was about to happen and they were the way showers and because they were basically the reflection of source energy in a human body their presence was so intoxicating that they were able to leave masses and masses of people into their word and basically flip darkness into light and change the access point of our own destruction now it did happen almost completely in atlantis where there was you know a hierarchy and there was a lot of power going on and um we blew up most of the planet but a lot of it remained and from that these new humanoids were developed reconstructed but there the new game was implanted where more um et species donated more chakra systems to the human body to give it the opportunity to remember itself as source energy using different aspects of the universe embedded into one body so we're not just walking around like cavemen going i i am we were like i am i create i become i feel i know and when we move back into this ele elevation this evolution then we completely remember ourselves and because earth is fast tracking her own ascension process which means she's moving into light whether we do or not and when i say light she moves into expansion she moves into a higher dimensional as um, understanding which means there's more information available less density less separation light is information it's technologies it's love it's all things so as she's moving forward we are by byproduct of osmosis getting those waves slapped into us so that we can turn on our own systems back on which is what you guys hear about all the time here's dna activations your light code activations your ascension activations and when you are in the flow of your own self you're moving really steadily with earth's ascension process now again there is always contrast there's always contrast to my side and the other's reflected side. So as we're going through this ascension process, there is a whole nother agenda going on that still wants control, still wants, you can imagine how valuable this planet is, but because this planet is so important to the universe itself, there is a treaty on this planet, which means that there is 12 star systems, and this is so Star Wars, so 12 star systems that basically make up a galactic federation of light that protect the earth from falling into the wrong hands 12 star systems that are literally working as one right and they have donated seven of your chakra systems okay and through this aspect they speak to you through your own genetic energy they work with you now a lot of you are actually descendants or fresh off of that galactic ship itself and implanted in the earth to help speed the ascension process to help wake up the masses to act as the second coming incognito and if you're incognito you're not a target right even though if you have a lot of DNA remembrance of being on this planet before, you probably have fear of your light, but that's a whole nother story and a whole nother question. So the mega beasts act as oversouls that were the guardians of the living library of Mother Earth herself. And throughout history, it's all been about this divine timing, about this perfect moment where we all begin to wake up and remember who we are as source energy and begin to work as one with this planet no matter what contrast exists no matter what contrast exists within me no matter what contrast exists in you it is your job it is our job to follow that light that is inside of us and use that fire of knowledge and sacred calling that's moving us forward to help preserve and abundantly um, create this new world that earth is moving into see she's not broken and she's not hurt and nothing nothing especially no man-made or et could truly truly have any 
one single effect on Mother Earth, especially the way she's protected, okay? Because she is the living library, she will always compress and expand. Now, the humans and the species that have gone along with that journey have also gone through that program, that, that program with her, that, that um, expansion process with her. Many of you remember it in your lucid spaces. Many, many of you recall Atlantis. Many of you recall different star systems. Many of you recall different things like this. But the whole point of it is to play the game of duality to create duality back into light. Because if I am not judging and I am not afraid and I am not worried and I am not connected to information that goes against what I know in my heart space, I am undefeatable and unlimited. And that is basically the mission that I am sitting here talking to you with is to be the voice for you until you remember who you are and your job is to show up as that fearless, loving, light-based information that is not going with the dark energy stories, but standing in the power of the light and holding the frequency and vibration of the Ascension herself. Now, obviously this could be a workshop because the, the depths of this question, thank you very much for these questions, by the way, they are awesome. Um, is it's, it's important because again, Regardless if you're like, oh, that doesn't sound like what my guru told me. It doesn't matter, you guys. The, what matters is that, that this planet is not in danger. She is going through her natural ascension process. The only thing that is ever in danger on this planet is the human ego. That is the only thing that's ever been in danger from the beginning of existence. And the human ego was formulated to basically help you survive. Help you survive not having access to your divine connection, not having access to your higher self. So once you actually become aware enough to have access to your higher self, you've got to change the program with that human ego inside of you. Otherwise, you will be living in duality and your life will be living hell and heaven simultaneously, which means you will experience both sides of the spectrum in the same five minutes. So your job is once you to arise in your higher self, get into the flow, the current of Mother Earth's ascension process, let go, follow your true North Star, which is your heart chakra, follow it into bliss, follow it into joy, no matter what you see around you. And a lot of you guys who are incarnating now on the planet are incarnations of our shamans, our earth keepers, are um, you're, you're coming from different star systems. And so you have a tendency to, when you develop your human ego, this bleeding heart energy that you're, you have got to protect the animals, you've got to protect the crystals, and you've got to protect all these things. But what you're actually supposed to do, you're not here to protect anything. Earth doesn't need protection. You're here to educate. You're here to inspire. You're here to remind people about the beautiful earth that we live on and where the magic is and the shamans that are rising and the energy that is rising on the planet is here to tell the stories of earth not to be mad that you know earth went into earth species went into their ego and killed people like what is the point of that that goes against your own heart so your job is to tell the stories and in order for you to tell the stories you've got to remember the stories which means you need to trust yourself you need to trust the guidance that's coming through you. You need to trust all the things that you know in your heart. And here's the thing. You're not going to know how you know them because you're never going to have proof of any of this. Proof doesn't exist in the universe. It is just a feeling and it is a memory. Only proof exists in physical reality and physical reality is never permanent. Physical reality is there and it's gone because it is not sustainable to be in a constant state of density. Density must change form. Energy must change form. Therefore, there will never ever be any proof of your version of a story. But I will tell you that as technology increases, as we move away from destroying ourselves and we move back into higher levels of consciousness, we will remember how to use the crystals on our planet properly. We will remember how to speak to the plants. We will remember what the animals are telling us. We will learn how to channel the winds. We will learn how to work with the water. We will understand the fire inside of us. And through that connection, 
all of the true stories of the whole entire universe will become. And all of the truth will come from the living library herself because it is like the Akashic Records incarnated is Mother Earth. She's got every story that ever happened and no fire and no destruction and no devastation and no amount of blowing her up can ever destroy because what she's done is she has microdosed and contracted. She has compressed every ounce of data that she needs on a hard drive at the center core of the earth, which is governed by Middle Earth. And Middle Earth has an entire atmosphere and an entire population and entire organizations and different species that all maintain and um, govern the living library essence of the tiniest pits particles that are in the database. And because Earth is so good at storing data that literally in one tiny raindrop of the ocean could tell you millions and millions and millions and millions of stories of Earth. And that's how badass it is. So why did you come as a light worker to help mankind move through this ascension process is because you wanted to see this happen. You wanted to watch this happen. You wanted to be part of this. You wanted to get that DNA activated and remember who you were. You wanted to have an ego, go through darkness, go through density, and then be joined back with the essence of who you truly are all in one lifetime. Can you imagine? Instead of going through millions of lifetimes having this experience, you get to do it in one. You get to do it in one lifetime. So this is the show. This is a reality show for the whole entire universe. And everyone is watching. And we are divinely protected and we are divinely, divinely guided every hour of the day. And those of you who choose fear are part of the problem. And those of you who choose light are part of the solution. And it really is that easy.